Hello, everybody. As Charles said, my name is Mark Gerard. I'm the uh, CEO and CTO of Jagex, based in Cambridge. And yeah, for the last 13 years, we've been known as the um, multi-award uh, browser MMORPG studio behind RuneScape. And probably in fairness, that's largely about it. Uh, certainly nothing to be ashamed of. Um, you know, our flagship title, RuneScape, has secured about 230 million player accounts uh, since launch. Uh, I think we've got about five, maybe six Guinness World Records now. Uh, and, um, you know, it was one of the first titles to forge the free-to-play sector and has certainly underpinned Jagex's space as the leaders in online 3D browser games ever since. Um, but apparently, every game has a shelf life. Apparently, every game should have a uh, bell curve, uh, be that player activity, sales, whatever. You should just do that, and then you should just die quietly. Uh, and go do something else, right? Um, and yeah, the truth is RuneScape hit that inflection point about 2007. It was growing really, really strong. Um, I don't think we could have done anything to mess it up, uh, even though we clearly did. Um, but it kept growing, 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 and then it kind of just hit that plateau and then started declining, roughly about 30% every year compound. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, obviously we could have, uh, we could have taken, accepted conventional wisdom, uh, accepted our fate, said let's go work on something else, but we didn't. And uh, you know, perhaps stupidly, belligerently, we chose to defy that convention and really double down um, and invest. And a, a lot of the lessons I want to, lessons is the wrong word, uh, given such an esteemed crowd, but the scar tissue mistakes um, and insights that we've gained over the journey, hoping I can share with you guys that perhaps help you down uh, uh, or solve for some of your similar journeys that you'll be doing, whether it's your first game uh, or your next, or in our case, our 48th. Uh, more about that in a second. Um, have I? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, changing, even internally, you know, it, it was clear to me if we were going to change, it wasn't for lack of trying, no one just said, will accept the decline, and that's that. And, you know, people worked really, really hard. We, we were trying to be very creative um, at how to change it, how to invigorate it. But yeah, there was this conventional wisdom persisting in the organization of just, that, that's cool, you've had an amazing run. You guys have been doing this for eight years. Just be proud of that. That's enough, right? Um, and despite working with some of the smartest people I've ever had the privilege to work with, it was clear that we didn't have in the organization at that point in time what it would take to fix this. Simply because if we say most people have accepted defeat, you're never gonna take the mountain, right? Um, and we had to start you know, applying this, what I'm about to share with you. We had to tear up our own rule book. We had to tear up eight years of baked in, sacred cows, conventional wisdom within the own organization of what we do that is different, special, what players actually want, what they actually pay for. Um, and that's hard, because that takes you out of your comfort zone. You've done something well for a long time, and you expect if you keep working hard, as in effort, equals results, right? But that's not the equation. Uh, it's certainly not. And actually, Smart effort or different effort, innovative effort, typically yields high results. Uh, again, I'll talk about that more in a bit. I'm obviously very happy to say that uh, since 2010, we actually did fix RuneScape. And it took us three years of a tough journey, but we got it growing, and we consistently grow it, and it's still growing today. Revenue, players. Um, and that, that's been a phenomenal achievement. So it's not just, you know, I just want to share you with some legacy data from a, a big game at a point in time, but I would almost say, if I'm bold enough to say, that Fixing RuneScape was our first second album. And a lot of this thinking, a lot of this journey we had to go down applies actually internally, let alone truly our next product. Anyway, I think most people th seem to think or have the impression, uh, I certainly did, uh, that second album syndrome involved some tortured group of creatives or engineers whose fear of failure involved uh, following a big success paralyzed them, prevented them from realizing their proven talent once again. Candidly, I think that's bullshit. I think it's a lie. I think it's a very convenient lie. Um, sure, I mean, perhaps a handful of people only have a single idea in their life. I think that's incredibly rare. I've never met that person. And 
Even that can probably be treated with medication, I'm sure. I think the truth is few of us want to admit is we were not simply not good enough at a point in time. We hadn't adapted to change in an ever-increasing space. Platforms have changed, genres, play styles, contemporary taste, and I can go on and on and on. Actually, in fact, any disruptive innovation is a threat to what you're doing today. By the way, I, I think it's really important pointing out, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or offend anyone whatsoever, and, and I know, we all know how hard it is to make games, to run successful services, businesses, big teams. I had an afro, full head of hair when I joined, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, this, this is truly an introspective reflection that I want to share with you, as opposed to saying um, you weren't, people weren't, we weren't good enough at a point in time. It's actually just a, uh, an acknowledgement that perhaps we were guilty of some of the sins that uh, I'm about to share. So why? And I think really this is it. Resistance to change and failure to innovate with the times. Now obviously, you know, we're a, a games business that uh, is one of the first to innovate. So you would think this is in our DNA. You would think that this is what we're all about. It's easy. Um, but the truth is, you know, resistance to change is simple and most of us are guilty of it. If we're being honest, it's human nature. It's the basic law of physics. This thing always tend to default to rest, right? That's it's life. Admiral Grace Hopper, we should all love her, not because she looks like our gran, um, but because she invented the first ever computer compiler when everyone said it can't be done. That's not what computers do, or well, it's not what computers will do. Um, She's very famous for saying, uh, and I'm a big subscriber of this, the most dangerous words in the English language are, we've always done it this way. And, you know, I find, even internally, this was our first sin. This was the Jagex problem of why, whilst we said we were innovating, whilst we said we were doing different things, actually we weren't. Yes, we had a lot of activity, we had a lot of meetings, we had a lot of creative, we were seeing what our competitors doing, what our players doing. We had a phenomenal BI capacity. We ingest some uh, two terabytes of information a day, just from RuneScape alone, 1,400 different data sources. We have deep, deep game GI, not even BI. We have deep game intelligence. We understand what every player can do, if we want, is doing at a point in time what they've done first, likely to do next, based on who they're interacting with. Very, very similar to what you guys are doing. So we had in a very powerful insights into our product but actually we were still resting on a foundation of previous knowledge, previous successes, previous things that worked, things that worked in very successful in 2005. One of the most impactful things when RuneScape really went nuclear at, you know, in, in its early growth uh, was actually when we introduced uh, a content update called Player Owned Houses. Uh, and it was basically taking inspiration from what uh, Linden was doing with Second Life. So they had launched you know, just kind of build your own world. It was the red. We're like, hey, that's not very hard for us to do. And actually, when we did it, wow. Like, I think we might have had two, three million active players at that point in time, uh, maybe 100,000 subscribers, and then it just went nuclear. It just rocketed up well past a million. And, you know, that was, so that was great. Our takeaway from that was players want UGC. Check. <laughs> Guess what? All our subsequent UGC updates, yeah. Didn't make much of a difference. Tech execution wasn't bad. Creative execution wasn't bad. But actually, we weren't being innovative. We just looked back at a previous, at a previous success. So if you're here, we've always done it this way. Around the office, studio, especially from your engineering group, be very afraid. Very, very afraid. Or do something about it and urgently build a culture that embraces frequent change. After all, that's the most fertile environment of innovation. Equally, your historic expertise in one domain doesn't necessarily translate to another. Let me give you a few examples. Not many of you will know this, but Jagex made and has four number one mobile games. Every mobile game we did was number one. 
We made four, and all four were number one. We're mobile experts, right? We're hot. Yeah, I stopped taking the piss out of myself. Um, this was back in 2010. Uh, all four in a row. Everything went to this top US, UK, uh, Christmas, New Year, I think six weeks running. Bouncing at the time was the first one we started with. I think it was about 16 and a half million downloads before we actually worked out how to get our stats on the App Store and stuff. This was a world of 99 cents on the App Store. Android didn't exist. Kindle Fire was a dream uh, in Bezos' minds, I'm sure. Um, and yes, each one was profitable, marginally. Not enough to feed a family of 500 like we have in Cambridge. Um, Yet, despite those successes, and, and we saw they were profitable, but not major. I think we made about three, four thousand pounds a month profit. Um, so we said, you know, it's not RuneScape. It's not a PC. It's not a real game. It's mobile stuff. It's a flappy bird shit, right? Anyway, um, innovation from any corner is good. Don't, don't, don't knock it. Um, so we said the time is not right for us to continue to invest in mobile. We're going to continue um, focusing on PC and browser. And uh, we'll watch the market, we'll watch it mature, we'll see where the winners start coming from, and then we'll move, we'll move fast. Um, so we did. Uh, we started a, a free-to-play game. We looked at the successes of our friends at... Uh, 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 um, we do have friends, I promise you. Uh, TSR Racing, I'm so sorry. Torsten, I've hit a uh, brain freeze. Natural motion, thank you. And you know this, the TSR successes, and went, wow, that's cool, great, you know, incredibly polished, you know, really innovative for what it was. Uh, you know, looking at where the other stuff was, that really stood head and shoulders above a lot of the other games at the time. And we said, hey, we can do that. That's wonderful. We don't want to copy. We want to do something that's us, that's innovative. And we actually had a specialist uh, racing team down in Carlsbad, San Diego, the old uh, Midnight Club team. And we said, we'll, we'll make a free-to-play racing game. This time with MTX. We're not going to sell it for 99 cents. We know what that movie looks like. Um, we launched it. We promoted it. Uh, are we king.com today? Are we supercell? Certainly not. And that, the revenue that generated was still less than the amount of money I lost on the bet as to what the numbers would be when we were successful. Right? And that's, that's just a very, you know, a very simple... Um, and candid example, though, of just successes, not even a few years ago, but even a few months ago, looking at what is hot today doesn't help you predict what's hot tomorrow. Um, and I think it's you being innovative and saying, and brave, and saying, I'm going to do stuff, not for today, not, because as soon as you do it, the whole entire market's moved on, right? Everything's already moved to the right. It takes you six months, it takes you a year to get it all together. And everyone's playing over here now. And that was exactly our carnage racing uh, 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 example. In fairness, we probably only have, you know, we've also cancelled a few projects which we didn't want to launch or we weren't proud of. But actually, bar carnage racing, everything else we've done has been successful, you know, profitable, successful on another metric uh, to date. But not RuneScape, right? Um, here's another example. We created another 45 mini games. Uh, spiritual successes to the classic 8-bit, 16-bit stuff I grew up on. Commodore, Spectrum, you guys probably, many of you in this room have, have lived through that. And uh, we, we had really compelling, innovative games. We did. People, top people played, we saw the activity. Some people paid. But uh, we were also dumb because we had a very successful business with subscriptions, with RuneScape. So we said, the, the rest of the world, what people really want is subscription. They'll, they want to pay a small fixed price and have all the content you can eat, because that's what we know from RuneScape. And this was in a world, so despite the quality of the content, despite it was accessible in a browser and everything else, where our cadence of quality development, it wasn't viable. It wasn't long-term viable. It's still profitable today, and we haven't made any more games for three, four years, but that's not the point. It wasn't RuneScape wasn't the next big thing. And it's, ver it's so simple. We picked the wrong monetization model. We were going for a subscription, premium subscription service when the rest of the world was already doing free. You had Miniclip or whatever else doing it for free. And we insisted we know better. We weren't arrogant. We, just, we had all this data. At that point, 
which started out in 2008, which stopped investing in 2010, at that point we would have had 11 years of information telling us we're doing the right thing. Simply RuneScape. And therefore we continue to be, despite at that point, it would have been 49 games, if you take the full mobile, uh, the 45 uh, funnel games, we were still the RuneScape company. Decade on, not for lack of trying. So some of you may have heard about our supplementary titles. I've talked through that. And that is the big, big question. That's the uncomfortable question. She knows the answer. We were truly not brave enough or innovative enough. We and the people we worked with all stuck to the same proven formula. Our previous experience, which is why none of those games really broke out, knowingly we were all guilty of we've always done it this way. Despite the fact that we actually thought every day we were leading edge, we were making new game mechanics and finding new ways of reinvigorating old ideas or you know, in bringing our twist to it. We thought we were at the sharp end of innovation. But what we didn't do is come back home to sacrifice some sacred cows. As I said, don't get me wrong. It's been a very few successful years for Jagex, and we continue to grow and everything else. I just want to share with you very openly some of our uh, uh, lessons. So you take this back and you challenge yourself, even today. Are we really being innovative? Are we still doing really what we did? for a customer or ourselves two, three years ago. How are we changing the space? Thanks to King.com, going public recently, uh, we're again the UK's number one independent developer and publisher. But obviously we want to change that. We don't want to be the UK's largest independent development game and publisher. I want to be the world's. And my team deserve to be the world's. And they work incredibly hard in order to be the world's. But we're not. So how are we going to do that? Obviously, it's not difficult. It's not. You just need to break out hit like League of Legends or World of Tanks, right? And then with that, with those guys. Anyway, hopefully this is the year that we meet that ambition with our launch of Transformers Universe. And later this year, a uh, currently unannounced title that we've been very quietly brewing, uh, which is getting very, very exciting, very fun. So, here's a lesson from Transformers Universe. Everyone expected us, our shareholders, our employees, to make an MMORPG. That's what we do, right? That's what we do with RuneScape. That's what we know. It's our USP. Despite all the lessons I've shared with you, the wisdom, the cumulative wisdom of, this, didn't, this wasn't an epiphany that hit me last week. Uh, this, this, is, this, is, this has been knowledge that we've cumulatively built as a team. We actually did exactly that. We said, yeah, we'll make a MMORPG. Uh, we paused Stella Dawn and said it will be basically Transformers in a RuneScape outfit, right? And Optimus can fish and cook. Uh, he can cut wood. It'd be awesome. And you can, yeah, you can level Optimus. How cool would that be? You could be Bumblebee. It took us a year and at that point, thankfully, at the end of 2011, we had that sobering moment of saying, actually, what have we learned? If we look back at all the things we've done, what we need to do next, if we really, really want to make our second album, is this the answer? Bear in mind, we'd already done a full year of development. It would have been easy to say, let's just hit the launch button. That's what everyone else would do. Let's see what happens. Right? But the truth is, we first made, this is entertainment, it's not manufacturing. We first made RuneScape wasn't copying another game, but creating something truly innovative at the time, continuing that spirit of innovation over the years. That's what we definitely believe we've done now with Transformers Universe, and actually why we created even a new uh, game genre for it. The launch of Transformers is what I see as the start of a proper journey with our second flagship title. If you forgive us that I would argue RuneScape is, turning around RuneScape was the first. But, um, I now truly believe Jagus in the final stages of overcoming a second album syndrome. 
So here's the lessons of what we learn. And hopefully this will challenge and help most of you here today. Lesson one. Be brave and original. Sounds obvious. Everyone says it. How do you know if you are? I would say if your game idea isn't scaring you, at least a little bit, you still know you've got a whole lot more to innovate or to change. Lesson two, talent. Everyone thinks that talent. Talent is not a synonym for employees. Talent is someone who's passionate, knowledgeable, but has accountability for that project. This is their game. It's not my game. It's, they're not collecting a paycheck. This is the person or the people or the team who go, this is ours. We own this. Not own this because we're territorial. Own this because we want to make it great. We want to bring what we know to this to really, really change. That's also one of the best ins insurance policies, insulations you have from, we've always done it this way, by the way. Build the right team, high-performing, passionate team that shares your vision is the only way to realize this and increase your odds of success. Sadly, I think many of you will know, and I can tell you as a fact, there's no guarantees of success. I actually do have the formula for fun uh, in the uh, appendix. We took ourselves so seriously at a point in time, we actually did try and plot it. Um, and I can happily share that with you if you want. But the truth is, actually, it, if it was that simple, everyone would be doing it. Um, but the right team, the right talent, uh, being brave and original dramatically increases your odds of success. Embrace change. You can see I... To quote John F. Kennedy, change is the law of life, and those who look only to the past or present are certainly going to miss the future. And I entirely agree with that. Fiendish question. It's a fun yet. It's never, I promise you, and this is a different way of thinking, it's never too early to ask for feedback. And if your team is saying, not yet, just give me two months, or whatever. Be careful. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. It's never too early for feedback. Get real players testing your key assumptions as soon as possible. Not the fanboys that make you feel good. Not the people who will love whatever you do. Don't get your family to test it. They're always going to be proud of you. Your mom thinks you're great. Your players asking people to part for money on something that's unfinished, that's an incredible asset test. That's what you should do. For us, this has been, this is something we do anyway in RuneScape, uh, given it's a content service, given the game updates. Oh, shit, I'm done. Uh, when I rehearsed that, it was only five minutes. It's crazy. Um, we, we update the content every week. It, it's dynamic. We're getting feedback the whole time. But actually, with Transformers, we actually, you know, within a closed beta community, we actually continue to build it and iterate it based on their feedback. And I think that was one of the most powerful things we could have done. Thank you very much. Uh, not sure I've even got time for questions now. Uh, but uh, yeah, if, if anyone has a burning one, you feel free to grab me later uh, or catch me on Twitter or LinkedIn, stalk me somewhere else. Uh, that's two underscores. You know you've made it when um, you have five other people who've got your same name and copied your profile. Um, I need to sort that out. And uh, yeah, at some point we'll talk through that if you guys are really excited <laughs> about it. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>